Okay, well, again, uh, back to my uh, iPad for recording. Not the same as in the studio, but uh, a little more freedom to move around because it's early and I just got a first cup of uh, espresso here and um, it's not good. And then you knew that. Come near you nations to hear and hearken you people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all the things that come forth from it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath hardly uh, he hath he has utterly destroyed them. He has delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falls from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood and is made fat with fatness and it is the blood of the lambs and goats and the fat of the kidneys and rams. For the Lord hath sacrificed in Bozrah and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks and the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust shall be made fat with fatness, for it is this day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night or day, the smoke thereof shall go up forever, from generation to generation until it lie waste, none shall pass through it forever and ever. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it, the owl and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call all nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing, and thorns shall come up in, in the palaces, nettles and brambles, in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be a habitation of dragons and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. Uh, the screech owl shall also rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There shall be a great owl to make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow, and there shall be vultures also gathered, every one with her mate. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, no one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth it, it hath commanded, and his, and his spirit it hath gathered them, and he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. Ouch. Uh, chapter 34 of Isaiah is called, you know, a heading that you'd find if you look it up on Google or Wiki or whatever it would be called The Wrath of God Toward Nations or Wrath Upon Nations. Clearly, <clears throat> there's a mathematical... I also thought you'd find it interesting to hear about the satyr and the unicorn. <laughs> Spoken of not in wrath, but just very casually. I mean... Uh, um, you know, say what you will, but God didn't seem to have a problem with the, the oh yeah, the satyrs will be in, and the unicorns too. You know, coming down. So, uh, so those people that I guess consider the unicorn to be blasphemous or something to do with just paganism, I suppose you'd have to look at that again. I mean, that's a side note. Now, this is how God is dealing. He says that. It, this wrath of his here is forever and ever. And we know that basically a forever judgment, I mean, what we get here is that, yes, at this time, there was a judgment, you know, where, where when the Lord destroys a thing, that's forever and ever, isn't it? 
So he's done that throughout history, and it's, it happened again here. You know, um, the other theme that you get in the Old Testament is that God will destroy Israel. You know, in Jeremiah, he'll destroy Israel, and foreigners shall move in. And Israel will go into captivity in Babylon. And uh, all the houses and all the wealth and all the, the, the whole thing will never be the same because it's being habitated by the enemy. They moved into the houses and palaces. So that's kind of a, um, how shall I say it? That's kind of a, uh, That's kind of, I just had to, it looked like my freezer wasn't, uh, wasn't freezing or wasn't completely closed or something. The freezer has to be at zero. But, um, so here we are in this situation and whatever the movement of the Lord is in wrath, it will never, you know, like Isaiah 34 and like the, um, uh, the land of Idumea and all that, uh, and the controversy of Zion, and some of this language here speaks about like e- eternity or the you know the great day of the Lord, and then and then some doesn't. There's parallels to like Jeremiah forty six ten Malachi one four. Um, <laughs> the the unicorn, um, according to the Bible is really, I just, it's like a joke. It's a, a unicorn is like a rhinoceros, right? So I, I think I remember that somewhere. No, I mean, it says unicorn, I know, but it, it's just to be fair, um, you know, a rhinoceros has a, uh, is a unicorn, is a, a unicorn, one horn, right? So just before people get carried away with that. It was a side note, don't get carried away with it. Um, yeah, don't get, don't get, (laughs) don't get carried away with the names of creatures that's, you know, um, let me put it this way. No, it's never going to be, um, the pagan gods and the Greek gods and the various, uh, half man, half, uh, animal hybrids that were made. No, those are never really going to be, you know, anything half and half wouldn't really be of the Lord. Right? It would be. So you will never be able to blend in the Lord with magical uh, paganism. Okay? You'll never be able to blend in the Lord with the uh, magical traditions of, uh, that go back, um, uh, gosh, you know, to witchcraft. You know, it's funny, I saw a commercial for, um, I don't know, was it Geico? It was some commercial where there's a witch flying around on a broomstick. Have you seen this? In uh, <clears throat> um, the office environment, and it's like a you know a big open room where she's got room to fly up above. And one of the guys has a broom or something in his hand, and the witch comes and she takes the broom. And um, he goes, yeah, next time I'm gonna stand up to her. And then he shakes his head, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Generally, the feeling you get is, um, you know, the inside joke on the commercial is we don't go up against the witches. I mean, we, we, you know, whatever they want, they come in here and they can do whatever they want. And we'll, we're just going to, we're just going to make time for them and, and give them whatever they want because that's where our provision, they're the gatekeepers to the provision and always have been. And everyone knows it, but no one says anything. So this festering disease goes on and now we're about to get a bloodbath and it's their fault. And it's the fault of the people that followed them especially those people who followed them in their churches that got taken over by same said, self-same witches that were then running the pastors and running things from behind the scenes because every secret society is beholden to that sisterhood. Thus you have a matriarchy that runs the world and always has from the beginning. Oh, it's done in secret. You know, there's always a man there, and they say it's a man's world, and there's the king. 
And who makes the king? They do. If you can find this old movie, Mists of Avalon, it lays it out perfectly. Um, I'm amazed how much stuff got revealed there. Uh, you know, incest rituals, all kinds of human sacrifice, you know, the sisterhood, and then the veneration of Mary to goddess status uh, done by witches. And, you know, the witches run the Catholic Church from behind the scene. Well, they run everything and always have and, and, and will until Yahweh turns it over. That's the backwards mirror deception. And they are invited to do so, and no man can overturn that. That's why in that commercial, yeah, I'm going to stand up to her next time, and then he shakes his head, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, no one wants the wrath. I've had the wrath of witches on me, and I can tell you this. It is not pleasant. In fact, it was nearly fatal in several instances. And I'm like, okay, all right, there's, there's power there. No question. I got to stick to my Lord. And uh, I'm not looking to pick a fight here with, uh, which is because, let me explain this. I, as a man, can't win. I don't have uh, all those powers at my beck and call. They've been, I've been stripped of power when I came to this planet. And I, I do believe in, you know, predestiny and preexistence, so... Um, you know, I'm not one of these people that believes life begins right there in the womb and the soul is sparked. And I know there are scriptures that you can interpret that way, but I just, I, it's not my experience. It's not my knowledge. And uh, I'm not going to be just buy into something because someone says it or, or just say, okay, that's, you know, that's right. I, there was nothing else ever at any other time and any kind of feeling or memories or, or knowledge that I know that there is, I'm going to throw out the window and, and let some, a guy tell me, like in the church, if you say anything like that, they throw you out on that. They want you to conform, and that means conform your mind to what they tell you. And anything that doesn't fit that paradigm, I've seen people do it. They just go, well, but this happened to you. Oh, no, it didn't. No, that was a demon. I was, nope, that's demonic. <laughs> no, I didn't. Have, I said it, but no, no, that's not true. And they all like that do the party line. They all lie. They all lie. They all lie. The church people lie. They're not being honest about what their experience in the world is and in life and in their spirit. They're being told it's all deception. You have to let us tell you what your experience is. That's why, that's probably the main reason why you won't find me in a place like that. Because it's death to the, to the soul. Death to the truth. And I, you know what? And I realize now the breach will never be healed between what I'm saying and the church system will never be healed. It's the thing that has to be brought down, period. And there is no other interpretation when you read these scriptures. They will be held responsible for the, 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 the pagan ways of the world, the, the, for the mass conversion to um, witchcraft and paganism done in the churches through a deceptive trick that's very very uh, amazing. But just like the churches of Adolf Hitler's day that gave Hitler cover, they're giving the devil cover. And it's just the same exact thing as Adolf Hitler. It's the same, the same church, the same entity, the same disease, the same sickness, the same stupidity. To think you can get away with something that you somehow you will be able to get away with. Um, I can't raise my voice too much of this thing clips. I know this is a hassle, but I had to turn it on just to get you a message. Somehow you're going to get away with it, that God's not going to see what's going on, and that, you know, someday God will reform the churches. God will never reform the churches. God will never reform the churches. God will never reform that which cannot be reformed. The church are the believers in Jesus, period. I mean, it's nice, you know, I don't mind, uh, you know, visiting the church and going through a worship ceremony, but I always feel like I've got to take a, a you know, a, a shower afterward. You know, I feel like, like dirty, like I just had to be forced to watch porno or something. It feels, I'm, but see, I'm like an empath kind of person. I see behind everything and everyone. 
I see what's going on in the pastor's mind. I see what's going on in everybody, the vibe, and I pick it all up and I absorb it and, I, and then I become sick to my stomach because, no, not because people are sinners. No, that doesn't bother me. I know what I am. I'm, I know what flesh is. I know what we are. It's the deception and the power that's given when a person gets that sheen and gets through to the other side. They get these powers and then they use them to create a massive mirror-like deception so you only see what's on the surface but underneath is, is the most perverse evil imaginable. Ezekiel saw the very same thing. I mean, it was like the elites, but I mean, you can, you know, I'm just telling you why hell is to earth now. And it will never be the same as it was. Look, I got people I know in, 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 uh, who are, you know, really good people in, in business. And they're freaked out. And they're asking me, what, what do I think? I mean, they're, they're completely freaked out. Molly, don't start. Do not start on me. Stay right there. Here, let me just bribe you. You want another one of these? Huh? Please don't start barking. Here. Look, don't deal with that. Okay, you'll have to indulge me. I need another, uh, I'm going to have another one of these. I need another shot of this because I'm completely bleary-eyed right now. I mean, I should have stayed in bed, but I never do. That's the sound of the, uh, uh-oh. Uh. Okay. That was the sound of the grinder. Yeah, for some reason this recording is hot. I don't know why. I, I've adjusted it, but I mean, I seem to be hitting the red. So I'm just going to assume it's not really clipping too bad. I, I'll keep it over there. Gosh, that's too bad. Well, you'll let me know if it's clipping too badly. I, I don't think so. I hope not. Anyway, you know, it's an iPad that seems to have an app for, uh, Recording and, and storing my recordings on this. Uh... See, here's the problem. Thank you for indulging me. I'm having a, another shot of this. What I like about espresso is that it's not a lot of liquid. And uh, the machine I have is by Breville. And they allow you to, what they do is they measure out a shot so you... You grind the bean that you're going to have right at that moment, and the rest of it stays in kind of an airtight container on top of the machine, but it's part of the machine. And then uh, you can either have a single cup or a double. It's a very simple, elegant way to have it, and uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a consumer product company that makes like juicers and toasters, and, but they make a really good, excellent... Uh, I don't need the the, 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 the cappuccino fe feature or the milk feature because I never really steam milk. It's just really the, the shot of coffee I'm interested in. I don't like regular coffee because it's a lot of liquid. And that teens, teen, tends to be acidic in my stomach, whereas the, the espresso is not like that. So Anyway, it wakes me up so I can talk to you. So let me explain this. And thank God for the coffee bean. What a wonderful... Lord, you're so wonderful at inventing that coffee bean. I just, when I smell those coffee beans, I just love it, don't you? I, it's just something about it. It's just a wonderful smell. I have some coffee. What is it? Organic Espresso Sierra Allegro Coffee. Oh, if you put your nose in that, in that thing, in the packet, which is a, a tinfoil packet, which is the, the way it should be. Oh. That is a great, I think it came from Whole Foods. It says medium dark and it says it's certified for, you know, it's, it's expensive. We used to buy it at, at Sam's Club, three pound bags, uh, cheap, but they're not cheap anymore. They went way, way up and I just decided 
you know what? A lot of those beans weren't espresso beans either. They were they were kind of you know, that that coffee didn't taste as good as say this one. Okay. So in Isaiah thirty four, God's wrath is upon the nations, and the, the sword is bathed in heaven, the power of heaven. And all the the point of this chapter is really to explain to people that the Lord sees what you're doing. He sees you've done evil on the side of the Lord. He sees that the king is corrupt. He sees that, um, you know, um, <laughs> he, he, right, the emperor, well, like Obama would be the classic case of the emperor who has no clothes because the press keeps telling him he's fine, he's fine, he keeps getting cover from everybody. And they set up fake debates where they have fake questions already from the audience where the, 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 the moderator shills for Obama, you know, right in the middle and, and he couldn't, couldn't keep a good man down and couldn't stop Romney. And I believe he's a good man. I don't necessarily believe the way he believes in God, but, uh, you know, um, I don't really see him out there pushing it on anybody. I just see him being the best guy for a fiscal job, for an economic job. It's like... Yep, God made this guy just for this moment, and he can fix things, but if the people don't let him, my prediction is that it's over right that, that minute, that moment. Um, the, those of you who are thinking about moving or rearranging yourselves, November 7th would be the day to start, if, if it goes the other way. No, Romney's not the savior. He can't save anybody. It would take a lot of years and hard work of people. And when I say hard work, I mean there would have to be a confidence in business that hasn't been seen in years here and a lowering of uh, tax rates to be competitive, corporate tax rates to be competitive with the rest of the world who are not 35%, but are like 28%, 25%. And, um, you know, things like that have to be fixed. You know, but, but see, there's a plan behind all this that you see. It's called the destruction of nations. The Lord is using the earth dwellers because pagans don't have any, they don't have any rima, you know, they don't have any knowledge of the spirit. Okay, they, they have spiritual, um, you know, like, you know, uh, spiritual powers in the sense of um, controlling other people or flying around the astral plane, you know what I mean? But they're limited to that astral plane. Molly, I'm telling you, you can't just keep doing that. I just gave you a lot of stuff, and you're trying to interrupt me. From I'm going to give them audio verite. They love it outside. You know, even when it's freezing, the dogs stay out there all night long, and they bark and chase anything that moves out there. I don't mind it, but... Uh, Oh man, there seems to be a fly trapped in that closet. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry to have digressed. And you know what? I really need to do these in the studio. I'm, but I had to. I had to say this. Really, it's more important that you just get the truth here. You know, rather than setting up and then when the right time comes, then we'll speak. The churches don't matter. They're part of the problem. The churches pray. Nobody cares. When the church prays, people should tremble. I, I rest my case. I, there's nothing else I can say about it. You know, it's a nice place. If you like social gatherings, you, you can go down to your local church and have a social gathering. And if that makes you feel better not being so alone, fine. But I feel like we are all alone. All of us is suffering alone. When I suffer, I don't say, Trish, come suffer with me. No, I'm suffering alone and she's suffering alone. You know, and to, to the extent we can share good things and, and happiness together and we can, we can share our troubles with each other through discussion, but she can't sweat my fever and I can't sweat hers. And I can't sweat yours. There is no collective. We are here as multidimensional beings and told it's a single dimensional situation, which it is not. And we're being dealt with, on a, and our lives are actually multidimensional. In other words, the streams of reality that we enter into and leave in our futures and everything are, 
Um, and the things that happen are, are different streams. We do not share the same history, nor do we share the same existence uh, collectively today. Each one is on a different track. Um, you know, it kind of reminds me of mixing. Uh, in mixing, when you set up a mix, the most important thing about a mix is really to set the preparation up to have all the sounds you need and all the vocals you need and all the backing tracks you need and all the guitars and drums and pianos or whatever you need, you know, to have it all set up and organized in groups, to have it all set there. But then you need a way to control all those groups. Say you have five groups, you know, you've got horns, strings, drums, vocals, you know, bass, synthesizer, you know, you have a few groups. Well, how are you going to control all that? In other words, all those different tracks, say there's 30 tracks, all those different tracks have their own thing they do. They're not, none of them repeat usually, sometimes they do, but none of them are really repeating the other one. Okay? So in other words, you've got a whole bunch of uh, tracks that are coordinated and look like they're sharing the same stage. But what they're really doing is they're, they're, um, each one has to play their own part individually that will eventually make the overall song be a song. But those are too many groups and too many faders, 30 faders. No one could keep track of all those. So how are we going to mix this dang monster down? How are we going to get control of it? Well, we have to come up with a way... And in the old days, on the old boards, um, the old analog boards, they had a thing called the VCA. I think, it's, I think it stands for, I may be wrong, but Voltage Controlled Automation. So you take your groups, you know, or your buses, you put each group into a bus, right? So that you can control that. That bus has that group and they're going to this destination. It's just like uh, school buses. They're buses, and then who, what's going to control those? You set up, um, for every group, they get their own voltage, they get one fader, right? So you, now you have six faders rather than 30, and they control each group. But, here's, but then there's even more then. But that six faders, what's going, to control the, what's going to control those faders? Then you come up with the VCA master fader. In other words, that one master fader that will control all the other faders on the whole board. So you set up those, say, five um, uh, master faders over each group, and then you have the one that's over those. And then you have control, okay? That's how you do a mix. I mean, that's old school. It takes time. Most people don't want to do a mix and take that much time doing it. But if you do it that way, you're going to have a better sounding mix. It takes you can't just whip songs out like, like I used to love, I occasionally love to do that, but I mean, that's not being serious. If you have a serious song, you have a serious mix, you got to do all that. Well, I liken it the same way to all these individuals, all these individual sounds, and sometimes there's just like one sound and one track that goes for like two seconds, and that's the only purpose, and it has to wait for that for, to chime in, just like the guy with the cymbals in the symphony orchestra. Now you, why do you not let me talk? Why? Why? I'm here as a servant to the dogs. I am their servant. There's just no other answer. So all these faders are controlled by then a few, and then all those are controlled by one. That one master fader controls all the faders on the whole board and all the groups on the whole board and all the buses on the whole board. It's the one knob that does it all. That's God, right? He controls the whole thing. At the same time, each individual fader does it, it, what it has to do. It's not going to say, I'm in a collective with you because that's already been organized by God. He's the one that organizes those VCAs. He's the one that has his hands over the world. And he organizes all the groups, and he organizes what we say is a collective, it, it, the self-willed collective, is really, um, he's organizing it as his collective that we didn't have anything to do with. We happen to, you know, you happen to 
find people that you're kind of running with. You know, God sort of put us together, right? We know that we don't have this organized self-willed collective. We know he's put us together. We're individuals, but we've been brought together for this purpose, but we're going to remain individuals. Those tracks remain individual tracks, the violin, the guitar, the whatever, they remain individual tracks. You know, we get brought together in these groups on these buses by the master, by the guy who's doing the, the, the guy who's mixing it all. You know, he's the master controller. He's the one that is bringing us together or bringing us apart. He's the one who brings either judgment or blessing. He's the one, he, he's not just the referee because he's in all things and through all things. He's part of the rocks and the sky and the trees and the people and the animals. That's why I don't like being, I've never been mean to animals because I see God in them. And I was like, hello, how are you this morning? You know what I mean? I greet them like they're, you know, just like I would anybody. Or the trees or the rocks. And give thanks for them. No, I, I mean, I know a tree can't uh, necessarily talk, but I do feel there's a there's a personhood in almost everything. And even the most bizarre things can take on a, a persona like, uh, um, you know, you've got your trusty, uh, I don't know, maybe you have a certain lighter that you light your cigarette with or your cigar with or whatever, and you've had it for years and years, it becomes this trusty kind of almost like you can talk to it. Well, you can't talk, to it. it's not going to talk back to you, but there's a presence there, there's an energy there, there's, a, there's an imprint of, you know, people who made it and you who used it and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the, the, the universe is... You know, this is where the, where the pagans think we're so dense because we don't seem to understand all that. And but that for them, that that's where God ends, begins and ends. It's their creation; they're the master controllers, and all of nature it needs to be in harmony to the one Mother Nature or whatever. And um, that 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 is the end all and be all, uh, ignoring the whole uh, sort of hierarchy of creation that's universes, multiverses, and all those things that, that God is doing and regulating and people. Um, and the proof in what I'm saying is wh whenever they make their plans, the pagan world, it never seems to go according to plan. <laughs> so there's another work force at work that they, they don't even acknowledge exists, but, they, but they'll acknowledge the mother goddess exists. And, you know, like um, they'll acknowledge like the movie Avatar, um, by James Cameron, filled with holes. And as if that answers everything, there's the great tree and the great mother tree or whatever that takes care of uh, and everyone, you know, comes together and connects, literally connects to the mother tree and we're all connected. But the problem is we're living, we're dying and it's not the same outcome for each person. And so what gives? If a person asks a question, besides Cameron barking them down and saying, no, no, you can't. <laughs> You know, and I've heard stories about him just like that. You know, in other words, you can't ask a question in James Cameron's world because a question will destroy the entire thing he spent so much money and time to set up. One question, why? You're done. The mother goddess can't answer it. It's because the trees and the rocks and the, and the fields and they all scream for joy and it's because of them that you exist and you go, no, no, I don't think so. Why? And the only answer you can get is through the Holy Spirit that's going to comfort your heart and say, give you the answer. And the answer may not be utterable in a language to understand why. Why do we have to have an incest ritual, mommy? <laughs> because of the mother goddess. You get my point? Why do we have to abort babies, mommy, when they're really near term? Why is that more preferable? Because the mother goddess wants them. She takes care of them. They come back as animals and all kinds of things. Okay. In other words, like going to Disneyland for an explanation of what is, you know, of, and you're a reasonable man and woman, and you're just never going to accept the answer the pagans would give you. They're going to lie to you. Well, now the pagans are the news media. Now the pagans are the, the political realm. 
and the entertainment realm and Disneyland and the rest of it, it's all basically wanting to be Jim Cameron's movie. You know, we're all, the victory to them is we are all connected and no one dissents and no one asks a question. And once we get to that form of tyranny and you all are nodding your head up and down and we're all connected, then we'll decide who does the living and the dying, thank you, and we're going to decide who is genetically superior and inferior, thank you, and we're going to make our own race of hybrids because that's all part of their, their whole way. They want to make hybrids. You know, they're, they're, you know, the Nephilim are all a part of that. The occult is all a part of that. Uh, the, the, the magical rituals are all a part of that. And usually, oh, well... You know, there's the other thing of the president gets in trouble. Looks like he may not win the debate or the election. Oh, and suddenly, wag the dog, we're bombing someone. Well, let's translate this into a spiritual answer. What that is, is a sacrifice to Satan for the victory of winning the office. Go kill some people and, you know, and, 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 and have your own little thing going on in private. Like, you know, nod, wink, what's going on. Make sure it's not the real perpetrator, but people you suspected of being the perpetrator. Then have the press lie and say it is the perpetrator. You've just done your satanic sacrifice to boost yourself for the debate and the election. That's why everybody, you know, who seems to know something about this, is on uh, Wag the Dog Watch. But it's not Wag the Dog when it's not funny when people get killed, right? When people get droned out of the sky. And, and, and a lot of times it's the, the guy will be traveling with his family that didn't do anything. He may not even be a criminal. There is no trial. He just gets blasted out of the sky and that's another pop for the president. That makes us disgusting. Because you know and I know that's really what's going on. That's really the real, real nub deep down and that's what's going on in all the institutions in America. And that's why America is about fini. The plug is being pulled not just on America, though, but on all the organized nations because they've all gone this way. They've all run it, as my mother used to say, they've all gone after the devil. They don't even try anymore to hide it. Everything I said about this nation has turned out to be 1,000% true. From the beginning. My hope was that it could be turned around, that there'd be more time because it was a new nation, and, but if not, it would be God is saying, no, given more time, this nation would not learn. It was too many people that have too many positions of power. We have to cut the, 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 the root off this thing. We've got to nip it in the bud before it goes any further because the, the stench is sticking to heaven. No, but the, the other thing is, and when the nation gets in the same straits we're in, Life is cheap. Nobody cares. The guy dies in Benghazi. Who cares? Nobody cares. Occupy Wall Street people cheer. We're at that mob mentality. We're at, yes, there's going to be public executions and whatnot. Beheadings just like in the Middle East, primitive things like that. It's all going to be there. It's all, it's all unraveling right now. We're in it right now, this minute. That's why my friend, a businessman, is freaking out. He, he's, he's saying, well, well, here, and there's going to be riots. I'm like, yeah, there's going to be riots. He goes, I feel like I'm under assault. I mean, where can I go? You know, what do you want to do, businessman? Well, I want to invest in, in uh, businesses and um, create jobs and make a profit because when I invest in businesses, people work, and they do. Every the day you invest in, what happens when you buy an apartment building? You got to, you, you make the payroll. There's the gardener and there's the people and there's the maintenance people and there's the, all the stuff that has to be maintained with the building and then there's the rents that come in and you have the formula is the, the rents that come in have to be more than the amount that you need to take care of the, the thing or you won't make a profit. And if you don't make a profit, you won't be able to feed your family. So you try to work the numbers out and a good businessman works all those numbers to make it so that they will be able to make a profit so they can have a home to live in and they can, you know, hopefully buy more businesses and apply. It's called private enterprise. The greatest wealth creation um, situation that, you know, given by God, it, freedom to the individual. 
right? Given in the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, from our Creator, the greatest um, wealth creator in the world. And what has socialism done? It's the enforced collective. It's really behind the scenes Satanism. And what has it done? It puts people in misery. The poor are poorer. The, the, the middle class goes to poverty and then the poor slip below that. And the few elites at the top say that, that claim because they have control of the press that they've fixed everything and we have a happy nation now. That's what Cuba's done. That's the same thing in the Soviet Union. That's the same thing in China. You know, although the, the, ironically, the Chinese and the, and the Russians are capitalists now, but they're still holding their people down to a certain extent. And um, anyway, that being, that being said, you have a whole bunch of people who don't who want to destroy the nation, like the the news media? They want to see the nation destroyed. The president wants to destroy the nation. No, he doesn't want the middle class to have it. He says that as rhetoric. The game he's playing is overwhelm the system, Solinsky tactics, destroy the nation, destroy the economy, and build the new communist global order. And that's exactly what's going on, and that's what he's doing, and that's why he tries to act like he's not. And the people that cover for him, they also have a death wish, and they want to die too. Because what's going to happen here is the middle class is going to be machine gunned. I mean, people, are, the rivers of blood are going to run, and I can't wait till you see it. I'm so angry. I'm going to take that back, but I'm just, I'm just so angry. I'm so angry that they've done this to their children, and they, but no, they bugger children. That's part of the system to, to uh, put them through to the other side as young men and women and to get them going in the right way and, and show them the right way of pro secret prostitution so they can work their way up in the system. So that's really the real reason it's going down. Too many, too many kids have run that way. Too many adults have run that way. And those kids are indoctrinating other kids and now they've they're, they're, they got their hands all over the prepubescent kids to teach them the way of the world. Now, are you proud of yourselves now? Because you see, the death of all this is on your head. I see you, murderer. I see all you people living in your little upper middle class environment. All of you dripping with blood. None of you worthy of respect. So you're not going to hang your head in shame until the rivers of blood, until your children are killed. And then you're going to start to get the message. You did this. You created this. And that will go, um, so I'm, I'm, no, I, no, I've, I, I don't want to see people and rivers of blood, but I can't, what, here's, here's my answer. I can't wait to see the turnaround, the flipping over on them. And yes, there'll be rivers of blood. And on that day, I will um, do what God said in Revelation uh, uh, 18. What did God tell me in Revelation 18? What do you tell me? Huh? Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Thus with violence shall that great city of Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So, all of heaven will rejoice over these rivers of blood. And if you don't believe that, then you can go to Revelation 19, the second half, so I get, so I get two halves, and you can see that, uh, that, that the Lord goes forth as a great warrior and, and cuts them down and... Um, they, they call this the supper of the great God <clears throat> and that these birds will eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, the flesh of the mighty men and the flesh of horses and them that sit on them. And so all the, the ones in Satan's army and all the ones who wielded power through the satanic system will obviously be killed and destroyed. And I, and I think that there is no end to this war. There is no way to stop the war. We are in the war from birth on uh, we are in a war with other people who have, uh, the people that are on the other side know, uh, but they keep that a secret, and so you don't know who you're dealing with. 
you're kind of blind. You don't, you know, you're not able to see because they're deceiving you. But they're there and they very well know and they're waiting for the day when they will all be rid of you and they will all be connected to one another like in Jim, James Cameron's movie and they're waiting for that day. I'm here to tell you that won't happen but rivers of blood will happen. Rivers of blood will happen. Their blood. The saints' blood will be spilled as well, but the thing about that is they go like Stephen in the spirit to the Lord where they are, um, where they, they go on shining like the stars of the heaven forever and ever. They're resurrected in, into these beings of shining light and they never die. And in fact, the whole idea of a flesh body for now ends up birthing that eternal being. So it's basically birth for them, but it's death for the people who thought they really held power here. For the presidents, how despicable this one is. Oh, the worst liar in the history of liars. He makes Bill Clinton look like a choir boy. All of his plans will be confounded and everything about him will be confounded and he will be found no more he will be alone in the end and no one will help him. And if that was the Antichrist, well, good luck. Uh, it doesn't fulfill all the, the, you know, the strict biblical qualifications of, you know, there'd be the suffering a wound that comes back from doing great feats of magic in the sight of others, making them the fear. This guy's got supernatural powers. You know, almost like he gets knocked out with his head wound. He comes back as this supernatural being that's able to like call down all kinds of things from heaven. And, you know, and, you know, so we don't, we don't see that. If you want to take a symbolic interpretation, he is antichrist for sure. But then again, so is the news media. They secretly want this destruction of the United States and this global communist order because they believe they're going to have positions of power therein. They don't believe that they're going to be pushed to the side or they wouldn't be fighting for it. The, no, they have an agenda. Destruction of the United States, and out of the ashes of that, the global communist order. And that's what the news media wants. Period. That, uh, how else could you interpret that? They don't care, and they don't give a damn about violence, because you saw with Benghazi, they didn't give a damn. So I don't care if you kill a million people, they won't care. If you have an earthquake that takes out, uh, or a nuke war, that takes out L.A. and New York and Miami, they won't even report on it. I, I don't even think they'll care because they're demon-possessed. That's right. They're possessed with a demon. Joe Biden was up there on the uh, stage. That's the, what demonic possession looks like, folks. That is exactly... But they all have the same demon. They're all being controlled by that one controller, and it's not God. That's why they voted overwhelmingly to throw God out of the platform. And they all cheered, yeah, get rid of him. Ah! That's demonic. And they're stupid, arrogant, insipid, vapid, repetitive. No ability to think through a thing. No wisdom. Dangerous unstable, cruel, crude, mean, murderous, perverted. Oh. And that's too many people in this country fit that description. And that's what you're looking at. And that's why some people I know are freaked out. It's not like it's you know, going back and forth like it used to. Um, we're seeing so many things now that we'll never see again. Yeah, now, you know, I let me clarify this again, just for the right. I don't want to see people, you know, get hurt. But what, you know, and I realize, and I'm getting to ream on it. Okay, when the rivers of blood start flowing, they won't repent. Okay. So it does me a little good to uh, be 
waiting for this. It's the reversal. It's the deer in the headlights I want to see. It's like, oh man, I screwed up. Like in Bridge on the River Kwai, it's a great movie. It's a perfect example of humanity, but they won't have, they won't, Lord says, they won't have that moment. They're not going to, you could kill everyone in the United States and they wouldn't give a damn. It's because they're possessed. Life becomes very cheap. Nobody cares about human life. It's why God must put it down. He must, you know, it's got, once it gets that perverted, which anyone that goes to Satan becomes that perverted pretty quickly. They only care about themselves. So that's what happens. It eventually goes to the point where it destroys the individual, then destroys the nation where it's tolerated. You give these people a foothold. You don't take care of them like Moses did in the golden calf situation. They will take over the country. They will take over the nation and destroy it. Used to be they would hunt communists. Well, communists are these people. So, yeah, and they would try to lock them up and stuff. Well, that would have been a good idea because if you let them run loose, they're going to take over the schools, take over the nation. They're going to infiltrate. They're going to indoctrinate. And eventually the goal is always the same to destroy the nation, destroy the individual, bring human suffering and misery to all people upon the earth. And then they've done their job. They feel no guilt about it. They just go on to the next thing to destroy. They destroy one city, one country. Then they move to another one and do the same thing there. And to the extent that you, we allow them in, they will do the same thing. Yeah. So one thing I like about them is that they're now not even trying to hide who they are. They're doing it right in front of us, right in the media. They're just doing it right on television. They're being who they are. I hope they don't go hide again. You know, um, if, if Obama wins um, the election, the most in, important election in the history of the world, because it's, it literally is whether the world will survive or not, whether you will survive or not. I mean, survive meaning as a, as, a, as a human being. I'm talking about rivers of blood. I'm talking about World War III here. I'm talking about mass um, population reduction. That's, that's who they are. You got half the generals, uh, you know, with the president and his plan, because they know what the plan really is. And you have half the generals against, who are patriotic. I mean, they're for the country. This president, it's not about the country. The country has to be destroyed. That's the whole point. And these generals want to help him destroy it. Okay, there I said it, the truth. It's ugly, huh? And no one will ever refute that. And, you know, it's, it's like, unless you can see into the hearts of people, you won't, it's just a prophecy. It's just, it's a, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, what is it? It's a uh, unveiling of, of a true thing. And because the condition of these souls are thus, therefore will God put an end to this situation. And that's a mass extermination proposition. He'll do it to his own to bring him home. Job well done. He'll do it to the others to put a stop to it. So they're no longer procreating and having children and ruining them. He'll put an end to it. If I were you there in the government, I would get on my knees before the Lord, just see how many people... And, you know, see if there's anybody else like you there that's patriotic and believes in God, you know, because you guys are in the minority and you're being pushed out. You know, the FBI used to be, you know, because I'm a believer in law enforcement and in, um, in the, you know, the military and whatnot. I'm not, I'm not a, an idealist. I believe that when God ends war, then you can get rid of the military, but not until then. Until then, you want to have peace through strength. I believe in that totally because I've seen it work. That's why I believe in it. That's what differentiates me from Ron Paul supporters, I suppose. Or from, you know, I'm a, kind of a libertarian, but I mean, on that military thing, I'm, I don't believe in adventures out there, but I believe in a strong military. 
I believe in law enforcement because people left to their own devices will turn it into bedlam. The FBI, um, when it was begun by J. Edgar Hoover, Edgar, the whole point in the beginning of the formation of the FBI was to hunt down communists because they knew that communist infiltrators would ruin the country. And they have. <laughs> the prophecy came true. It became politically incorrect to uh, hunt down communists because all those beautiful actors and actresses, they were all reds. So we don't dare say a thing about that. And all the rich people are reds. And that's them. Why are all the rich people reds? Because that's how they can get away with having their wealth. Because if they go red, no one's going to bother them. Otherwise, they're going to, you know, the, the, the mob who doesn't have is going to take their pitchforks to these people. Look what they're doing to Romney. He's not even that wealthy compared to, to, to a lot of these people that are criticizing him. They want to run him through as he's the rich guy. Uh, it was well understood. It was, you know, the people looked into the pension of the president, the pension of Romney. The pension of the president's actually bigger and has investments in various trusts and things um, globally, in other countries, in China. So there you go, hypocrite. Because Romney represents what's worst about America in Obama's mind. That is a self-made man who took his inherited wealth and, and gave half to charity and, and half set it up in a trust for his kids, made his own money, self-made, made it without cheating, and um, you know knows how to run businesses, saved the Olympics, did good, good works in society. And... Um, that's the one guy that Obama hates worse than anything else, and that these 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 people cannot even imagine such an evil man as Romney being there as president. They'll do anything they can to stop it because it's it's the end of the world for them, and it is. It means for them the destruction will be postponed, and and maybe there'll be a revival of business and the middle class, which is what they hate. They want to put everyone in poverty, except for them, and that they believe that they'll be able to do that. And they've always wanted to do that. They're, they're the ones in Ayn Rand's novels that, that, you know, drive the gas prices up. I mean, Obama drove up the price of gas to three sixty a gallon. And he said that when gas was lower, it means there's a bad economy. When gas prices are higher, it means we're on the right track. So he lifted the price and then kept it there. And yet nobody, nobody cares. I mean, you literally, he could say, now I want you all to commit suicide. And they will. They're remote controlled, and he's one of the he's one of those VCA master controllers, voltage uh, controlled automation. They're automatons, and he automates them with one of those faders. He can control millions of them, all possessed by the same spirit. But the ultimate master controller of all, though, that even controls Obama and all the Satanists and the pagans and the communists and whoever else Obama loves. He has the master fader and can pull that plug on Obama instantly or use him as a weapon of judgment against the people who have gone decadent and have gone perverted and have gone um, into lying to their children who have connected themselves un in an in unholy, despicable manner to the beast and we'll see through this elect. See, another way to look at the election is how many people have gone to the devil and to the beast? And if Obama wins, you'll see that too many, and so the Lord's putting an end to it. And not just an end to this situation, but an end to France and Greece and, and England and, you know, the whole modern world, so to speak, uh, will be put an end to after a nice war to kind of depopulate and kind of thin things out a little bit. And he'll put those idiots in charge who can only, can't see the nose in front of their faces who think about depopulation like as a solution and they'll have them go ahead and run the war. I feel sorry that I have to be here, you know, in a way and not because of the 
pain and trauma to come soon. It's, it's coming now. It's come already. The conversations I've had this weekend with people, it's really, really bad, huh? They're really freaked out. I mean, you're talking about movers and shakers out there are freaked out. They're like, oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen day to day. I can't do it. I feel like I'm under assault. I can't, you know, the business people, no one's going to invest in anything. And that's just going to make us go into a Great Depression, which Obama would love. Again, he loved and supported. And in the last debate, he said that the price of gas, if you just translate what he said, that when gas was 187 a gallon, we were on the verge of a collapse. So thank God he got the price up. That's what he said. No one's ever been able to do that and get elected. But he, he he's, has a good chance of being reelected. That He did that on purpose and they're all cheering it on. Make it $10 a gallon. Let's just end um, commerce, just have uh, people wait in line and have clothes issued by the government. And if you don't think it can happen quickly, like in a matter of months to get to that level, it can happen even quicker than that. It can happen in one month. It's because they get off sexually on human misery and suffering. That's, that's the bottom line. It's all run from the libido. Yeah, well, why would they, you know, some of the snuff films you hear about are like the plane crash, there was footage, and you get to see people traumatized on the way down, and they run that and have their orgies around. I mean, elites, you know, you, 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 a film like that would cost, what, a million dollars or something? Just nothing to them, uh, just so they can get off. That's it. The, the, they can't get off any other way. The more perverse that it, it ends up, their appetite gets to, it's got to be totally bizarre. Or they can't get an erection. And they, they, they just want to make the whole world in their image, in the image of their perversion and their, and their, and their, and their penis. It's got to be in their image. That's their God. You know, symbolizing, um, you know, and then they layer it over with, you know, the finest craftsmen, and the best airplanes, and the best cigars, and I don't know. You know, it's just, it's really hard to take. I don't even, you know, I don't even see that I have any utility here. I don't even, I see everything. I don't want to see anything. And nobody who ever opposed me and all these people that came out of the woodwork over the years to try to argue with me, none of them ever stuck. Turned out I was right and they were wrong. Turned out they were wrong about the economy. I was right about the economy. They were wrong about the motives of, of how many people connected to the system are you know, really um, connected to Satan. They, 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 they opposed that because they said, what about people like, uh, you know, these great writers and these various people, you know, that they got published. They were part of the system and they're not going to hell. So, you know, you can't say that. And it's like, they were getting upset that I was talking about the line. <laughs> I said, if you're over that line, dude, you're going to hell, period. You can write all kinds of books about Jesus. That might be very helpful. I don't know. It's, that's something you're going to have to work out with the Lord. If you're found in Satan's, you know, support, if over there with him, then that's your deal, then you can write all kinds of Christian books, you're going to hell. I don't, you know, it doesn't, God, will you people just wake up? If you're over there, you're done, you're dead, you're finished. If you can hear this message, then repent. If you don't want this, then don't repent. I don't care, that at this point, I don't care whether you do or you don't. God says we're supposed to care, I don't think I care. You know, I, if, if you, in other words, if you're one of them, you're dead to me. And I don't need you in my life. And I don't need to think about you and your stupid ways. I don't need to, you know, bother. I see you. You're going to go vote for Obama. You're going to go do this. You're going to go do that. You know, I see you. I'm, I'm surrounded with people like this. And um, what can I do? They have made a pact. They, not me. This is their thing. They, and they said, it doesn't mean that. People like you need to shut up. No, it, it doesn't mean that. I made a pact. Uh, whatever I had to do to get along, God's not going to hold that against me. And uh, to hell with you. And I'm here to say it's got nothing to do with what you think or don't think about or what your opinion is about something. It's just what is. 
Anyway, I guess you thank God that you were a, a misfit, huh? <laughs> you were excluded. <laughs> Maybe you were in a wheelchair. They don't want that either. Maybe you were old. They don't want that either. But whatever the reason is, I believe that God supernaturally kept you out of it. And that's, you know, most of the listeners here are in that category. And those of you who are targeted individuals one of these days, and I keep wanting to have that conversation with you about, you know, uh, a, a message to you. It hasn't occurred yet, but it will. You will thank God that you are a targeted individual. Yep, believe it or not, before you die, which could be soon, you will thank God that you're a targeted individual and not one of them, that one of the targeters. You're going to thank God that, you know, you stuck out so they, had, they formed a coalition to harass you electronically, really spiritually, and, and just, and you ask, why do they torture you electronically? To see you squirm. Why do kids torture little animals? To see them squirm. What's that all got to do? That, that's the fall of the flesh. Thank God you're not one of them. Those of you who've borne their crap and taken it again and again and rejected, uh, you know, compromising yourself just to, to get along with them and paid a price of, you know, unemployment or, uh, you know, social pariah or whatever it is. And they've been mean to you and they've hurt you and they've rejected you and they've, and they've, they've tortured you, you know, daily. Your reward is coming. Your reward is coming. And part of that reward is you'll see it flipped over on them. And on that day, the Lord says, rejoice because I have avenged you on her because it's her, the goddess, the queen, the, the, the witch, the, the witchcraft, the, the Satan, the this, that, whatever. It's all part of the same. It's all the same thing. And um, if Romney gets elected, Prophetically, it means that the nation would still have a chance, even though God sent a Mormon to flip out all the Christians that are judgmental. He could have sent a Buddhist. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I see people as, uh, you know, I don't dislike. The only ones I don't like are the, the satanic people, you know, the people that take any religion, and, but they're really this, that, that dual double deception thing they do. That's, that's where I cut them off. I, I want nothing to do with them. But everybody else, no. That's, the majority of people on the earth you know, don't fit into that category. These people are the ones that run things, though. They run the news media. They run the, you know, they're the honchos, usually, because they learn to play the game of deception, so they get moved up the ladder. I, I, I just, you know, it's, it, this world is not something I would even have any, I don't know what God's up to. I don't know why I'm having to be here and witness this. I don't even understand what, I would never come here. Never, never. For what reason? You can't win. They can't win. You can't win. Only God can win. But I mean, why endure this? I don't want to be around, um, you know, these airheads running around wanting, you know, socialism and communism. I don't, I, you know, and really that's a code word for we want to die because ultimately it's about human misery and, and suffering and death, um, and depopulation and, and eugenics in order to get the, the, what they really want is a race of hybrids ultimately of machines. I mean, that's where, I, I'm jumping way ahead, but I mean, that's where all the logic takes you. It takes you to illogic. It shows how perverse they are. They don't want these bodies. They want hybrids they can download themselves into and then go be like the aliens or something. You know, that's what they want. Ultimately, that's what all this leads to, along with the destruction of the planet, because God made it, so they need to pervert it with GMO foods and do whatever they can to 
uh, pervert it and make it something unrecognizable from what the original creation was so that they can then derive power from that and continue down their path. And God allows it. And I'm like, how can you do that? How can you do that? This is disgusting. You know, poop is caviar to them. You know, perversion is, is, is holiness. Blasphemy is poetry. A crucifix in urine is great art. Cheering God out of the platform means you get reelected. And if it's gotten to that point, folks, uh, game over. Okay, I'm just warning you. And I'm not going to tell you who's going to win the election or not. You can go with any psychic, he'll tell you. The important thing about it is who wins means something prophet prophetically. And a lot of times they say, well, Hitler was in, that was it, it's, it's over. And it wasn't over. But you're saying, well, Obama gets in, it's over. Yes. In this case, it means that God has spoken. Those of you who thought about emigrating to other countries, well, um, the doors will get locked pretty soon, but you know, while the getting's good, then, then get, if that's what you're led to do. I may not be, I may be led to just stay here and you know, this is my home, you know, the desert out here in New Mexico is my home. Um, I went down to put the garbage out and there was a, a really nice lady that lives here that runs a, um, her and her husband are here and they're, they were from Texas, and they, I guess they retired here. I don't know, but she has an email thing going, and she's really nice, and, and um, she's wearing, a, you know, everyone here is voting for Obama. And this, they're putting out their signs in the, on the yards, and she's wearing an Obama sweatshirt. I didn't say anything about it. You know, suffice to say she's a nice person. And I thought, well, this, this is not the depraved individual that I was just talking to, but they don't know they're depraved. They don't, they behave as nice people, and... You know, could she be one of them? And, and it, you know, the only way you could tell, I guess, would be if I were to bring out my Romney sticker or whatever and see what the reaction was. But, I mean, it's not about politics. It's a spiritual thing. But I, I would say this is a, you know, there's a lot of nice people who are going to vote for Obama, you know, that, that are. So I don't want to give the impression that, you know, it's, I, I, it's a certain thing I reject. It's a certain game I reject. It's a certain embracing of a certain thing. And then the deception of trying to appear as something you're not. That I, I reject. Because it leads to, um, you know, the deal canceled with God is what it leads to. And most of these people believe that God is taking care of them and God is for Obama and God's going God's to gonna take care of them. Most of the people in the churches say, thank God, you know, all the bad things, but at least I've got my salvation. I'm not here to argue with it. It's between, it's an individual thing, it's not a collective thing. I can't make a broad brush statement about, when I say them, I mean people who have sold out to the devil who are acting like they didn't. That's what I mean. That's the, you know, and, and to the extent that it, this is salvageable, then there'd be another path. If it's not, you'll see the same path as the last four years that God has spoken. And on the way to the destruction, there may be a financial uh, reversal and comeback where things may get quite nice. But, you know. But I'm, I, I'm sick of it. I hate their... Dis I don't like the magical realms and, and the dragon and all that. I don't like it. I'm not meant for it. I'm not born that way. I'm not made that way. I'm made to do one thing. And then I see something like that is destroy it. But I'm behind enemy lines because the world is like that. So I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? The, I, to get along, I'd have to have no morals, Machiavellian tactics, no compassion or empathy for anyone else. I'd have to become a psychopath that I could really do something here on earth. I could make a big mark. 
you know, and you got to really get into that whole perverted slave thing and get them under you and get them, you know, bow down to those above you and get it all going on and move up that ladder and stab them in the back to make you kill. Boom! Best friend! Boom! I stab you in the back and go further! Ha <laughs> uh. And no man of God, every man of God would have to agree with me. I may be pretty gruff this morning, but, uh, you know, they may have a nicer bedside manner, but they would have to agree with me or they wouldn't be of God. If they come at you and say, oh, don't be so judgmental, that means they're of the devil. Because in so doing, they've already condemned you. And only the devil condemns, not Jesus. But you just condemned all the pagans and all the witches and all this stuff. I, no, no, I didn't condemn them. They condemned themselves. I'm simply mentioning the truth about a thing. And I'm trying to wake people up that if you're not sure you made that decision, you better repent because you, you, maybe I'm wrong. Because God can just sweep this all away and give us another hundred years, you know, easily. He's God, he can do what he wants. But I mean, if you didn't mean it, then you better not be over there. You're going to have to come out of her if you belong to God, my people, you prodigal sons and daughters, and be separate. That's right. They'll get mad at you. You might have to move to another town. You know, you'll see. It's not fun to live behind enemy lines spiritually. You know, you wait on the Lord to come rescue you. That's right. We wait upon the Lord to rescue us as individuals because we're we're to down and we're hurting and we're suffering. They're not. We are. And even you know when it doesn't matter politically when Bush was in office or Reagan was in office or or Clinton was in office or any of them it doesn't matter. In the end, we're still suffering. And they're all playing games back and forth across the aisle. There's no solution there. There's just, you know, it's kind of like um, Romney to be is like an umbrella. It's raining and God gives you an umbrella. You know, and, you know, if you keep asking for an umbrella, he gives you one. Oh no, he's a Mormon. Get rid of. He's doing a whole work there too. I mean, they had to, in the old days, put up with Herod, right? A mass murderer, pervert, and a murderer of children. And his daughter. And the rest of them. And Pharaoh. And Caesar. And who else? You know, I mean, it's just... <laughs> and the Pharisees. And the priests and the, all of whom are liars, at least in the Bible, and regarding the death of Jesus. The best one of them was Pontius Pilate. <laughs> he was, you know, the Roman. He was the only guy that was, you know, at least he was honest. I mean, he, I liked him better than anybody else. No, it's that evil under him. It's that thing that goes on, that double deception thing. And then you're dealing with the devil. And when you enter into the other side, you get cover because you go behind the mirror. That's why in the vampire movies they show that the vampire casts no reflection. Why? Because he's on the other side of the mirror. Because he's on. it's a metaphor for being on the other side. He serves the devil. That's why. He doesn't cast a reflection because he's already dead. That's why. Ah, uh, never mind. It doesn't matter what I say. They're going to do what they're going to do, and we're going to do what we're going to do. It doesn't matter what I say. The doors are shut. It's just them who are there are going to stay there, and that's what I'm... There's no point for me to evangelize, because evangelism is now dead. So I'm talking to us. Okay. Well, anyway. There may be a few stragglers out there that you know, never belonged there in the first place, who never really bowed their hearts, but just kind of were weak, you know. I think the door's open for them. But they have to, you know, 
make a move. They can't just sit there and expect that, you know, uh, they have to use their will. I guess, you know what, these messages are going to be a lot better when, um, <laughs> when there's a lot more death. Then I think there'll be a lot of people who will, you know, take it to heart more rather than just laughing it off. I don't think it's funny. You know, this is the spiritual message the Lord wanted to bring. It sounds pretty urgent. And yes, I can't wait to see the tables flipped. And yes, when they see the thing collapsing and their heads are on the chopping block and they're finally going, oh my God. And then the Lord told me, no, don't, don't look forward to that. Because remember your own family, they repented not unto death. They doubled down on it, on their position. Oh, that's right. I've seen that. That was taught to me as a lesson. That was, hard to, that was hard to take, Lord. That was so hard to take to see someone actually doubling down on Satan, on pagan, rejecting, and someone actually rejecting Jesus more fervently on the way to death. Not better run to Jesus. It was the opposite. Doubling down on the rejection of Jesus to make sure we understood that was part of the Masonic Pact understood that that was part of the way. That's why the success was there. So this person thought. They doubled down on Satan and rejection of Christ, even though most of these are Christians, upon death. Figuring it will give their children and grandchildren a better shot. That's why, like, um, you know, I've been really busy mixing an album, and it's, you know, it's a lot of hard work, and, you know, it just hasn't been energy or time for this, but, but the Lord comes first, you know. There just hasn't been anything to say other than this message, which is just horrible. Horrible. On the day of the Lord's judgment, you know, everyone's going to suffer, no one's going to have. And it's all going to be, it's what they want. It's what they are bred to do, destroy. And it's much worse now than it was in, in Adolf Hitler's day in terms of the potential for death and much worse than Stalin's day and much worse than Mao's day in terms of the potential for, 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 for the blood running. And the blood runs after the food runs out. First you gotta starve and be sick, and then you get to die. And that's the kami way for you. That's why we spent blood and treasure fighting communists, because we knew what human misery looked like under communism. Communism is rejection of God and embracing of poverty and pain. Okay. They worship death. So that's a perfect religion for them. Uh, you know what? It's too early for this message. Bring it out in five years. You know, it's too early for this message. Too early to warn people about how oh, I'm going to hell. That's too early for that. Too early for that. Unemployment means nothing. You see that? No one repents. Death of the Benghazi diplomat means nothing, or consulate, or whatever, consul guy. It means nothing. Uh, the death of Detroit means nothing. An earthquake killing fifth, you know, 20 million Californians would mean nothing. I mean, it's gotten, it's, it's, we're here, we're here, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. 
360 a gallon. Cheers! Yay! He admitted he did it himself. It was his policy. And yes, he did it on purpose. It's okay. <laughs> Folks, it could only happen if there were enough people that had gone the wrong way. Then Yahweh will pull the plug. If enough people suck on that tit, Yahweh will pull the plug. It's just that simple. Don't you get it? It's just that simple. He's done this throughout the ages to every civilization. When it gets to a certain preponderance of the people where it can't come back to, to, to equilibrium or normalcy, he pulls the plug. They know he's going to pull the plug, but the spirit in them wants that. That's the whole point of inducing people into Satan. It's for the destruction of humanity. That's what eugenics is all about. That's what transgenics is all about. Destroying the original thing that was there. Destruction of humanity is what it's really, if that's really what Mick Jagger wondered about in his song, Sympathy for, for the Devil, he said, what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. No, it's not puzzling me, Mr. Devil Idiot. It's simple, it's always been the same purpose and that's to destroy humanity. End of story. But doing it through deception and, and hiding and lying, making a game out of it. Making it so no one knows what you're talking about. No, God wouldn't pull the plug on, on, on the Rolling Stones uh, who made all their profits on Satan, on Satan's power. Well, so did all the rock bands. He allowed them to thrive. He allowed Cain to live. If anyone was going to smite Cain, they'd be sm smote first. They'd be killed. He wanted them to thrive wanted the temptation to be huge for people to run in. And, and basically, Jagger and company were evangelizing, you know, the average people out there, telling them it's okay to sell out to Satan. That's basically the message of their, you know, all up and down the line. You know, Exile on Main Street. You know, all these albums are just basic evangelism. It would be the same thing as getting a, you know, Billy Graham up there or something. It's, 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 you know, it's, a, it's identical. But it was allowed to thrive. Oh no, it's veiled all the language to an average person. They would never hear that in the lyrics, no. Or get that, no. That was done that way on purpose. Same with the Sgt. Pepper album and the Satanic Majesty's Request. And the, uh, Stones had a song, an album called the, Their Satanic Majesty's Request. I mean, how much more blatant do you want it? And you know what? They don't practice what they preach because they're not collectivists. <laughs> it's all about me, right? Mine. No, they're bowing down to nobody. You know, whatever their whim is, they do. But you know, it's still the sadness, huh? There's no eternal life there with rock and roll. These rock stars get old and die. Many steeped in sorrow because they can't trust anyone around them because of when you become famous or rich, you know, you become alienated from, you know, everyone has a different motive. So you become isolated, abused and mistreated as you get older by caregivers. Oh yeah, I've seen it over and over again. You pay every nickel of what you took. You pay. You pay. You pay. Every nickel of what you got by scamming, you pay. Nobody gets out of here, you know, gracefully without pain and suffering, without paying back what they did. Nobody. So if you became fabulously wealthy um, through satanic means, if you became fabulously uh, successful and famous through satanic means, if that's really true, meaning, meaning you got your wealth and your power and your fame through causing other people to suffer, you're gonna pay back every nickel, every, every penny. 
You know, whether you run into Jesus or not, you're still going to have to pay for the crime. You're still going to have to do your time. You're still going to have to go to death row and you can get Jesus on death row, but you're still going to be put to death. You know, you, not the best comparison because the person in Christ, even if he has to be put to a carnal death, will live in Christ, will, is forgiven. Absolutely. The thief on the cross, the murderer down the street, whatever, forgiven. It's the pride and the arrogance to think we collective are so powerful. We got this beat. You can't beat the Lord. Nobody can. So I don't know, half the time I think humanity is the stupidest thing that ever was invented. And then I see, you know, the nice part. You know, I see people sacrificing for other people, you know, helping other people, and including people that are on the left. You know, I don't want to make it a left-right thing. You know, I, I have because I've, you know, I've always been for free markets and capitalism and entrepreneurialism and, you know, the human spirit, you know, to be free. It, it just seems like I'm, in, I'm, I'm a dinosaur now. Like, that's just the wrong way to think. We've got to tear this sucker down. It's evil. And half the Christians I run into, they're on the same side. They want to tear it down too. So, <laughs> we're just so bad. We are so pathetic and, and hopeless. It's amazing that God puts up with it at all, but I mean, he must have wanted it. All of us, including them who are on the satanic side, are deaf, dumb, and blind, completely. Unless he led us along the path, well, we would stumble and fall. None of us is, is, is any good on our own, not one of us, not even one, not one. If they appear good, it's usually an external thing, and they sometimes they're the biggest perverts, they're the biggest you know, secret criminals or whatever, you know, these people that, well, case in point, look what happened to uh, Lance Armstrong. Talk about a fall from grace. That, that's terrible what happened there. But it all came, you see what I mean? It, it, it's, you know, you would have thought years ago, oh, this is a great guy, he's immune, he's, hope it doesn't happen to that Michael Phelps guy, you know? But, Anyway, you'll just have to, this is too hard a message. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, there's nothing I can do about it. I, uh, I can't be silent because the Lord, you know, he's got his timing. And I, I, I'm going to go back to the uh, music biz now. I will see you later. There'll be some hope. You'll get some hope. You've got Christ. You've got Jesus. you there's, there's, there's hope in him. You know, get yourselves into the word, you know. And just keep your eyes, because of all this, let that push you even further into Christ, further into that spirit of, of you know, love, compassion, forgiveness, you know, looking after the, in the end of the day, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help anybody. I'm going to help, you know, people that, that I claim to not want anything to do with, I would help them. I mean, I want to socialize with them, but I will you know, I'll give them what I can. I'll, I'll do whatever I can do. There's going to be plenty to help on that day. And uh, people are going to be freaking out. And, and I, I just would just tell them, well, try God and try repenting and see if God's way might not be better, you know. I'll see you next time.